That's how you do it. It's a trap. It's a trap. Dude, the Banes that just smashed into the army. Let's let's take a quick a quick five second masterclass on distracting the opponent because this is something that Juno actually told me was a weakness in my play in general was that I played very honest with my opponent where I would try and make more workers and make a big army and when they defend I attack their army directly and there's no trickery involved but this game this is like a trickery focused Ling Bang Muta style where I'm not just sitting on my butt on creep trying to hold and hold and hold if you poke at the Terran and you put Lings and Banes and various places and mutas and stuff, then a lot of the times Terran will neglect a really crucial aspect of what they've invested in. So the key is to think about how you can divide your forces and create multiple opportunities for the opponent to fail, not just the engagement. If you play in a totally linear fashion, especially with Ling Bay Muta, a lot of times you run into problems against Widow Mines. Because the Widow Mines deal a lot of splash, and even if you have the larger army, sometimes you just lose too much to each of the mine hits. So, let's look at the the Art of Deception for Ling Bay Muta. The build order, it's not important, I've gone over that in other videos. I take bases, I take drones. One thing that is kind of nice to notice is this number right here. This is basically me saying, this stage of the game is safe to drone because I saw that it was Marines and it's probably a 2-1-1 build and if I continuously make Queens and drones then whenever my third is done I can just transfer over to this base and I'll have great saturation. So since I know what it's going to be I go double Evo to take an upgrade advantage. The opponent's going for 2-1-1. Very basic stuff. In the early game I do tend to play fairly defensively. Zerg can saturate three bases faster than Protoss and Terran, so that's a nice little edge you can pretty reliably go for, and then figure out what the most ideal defense is for the different types of pressure that can come your way. So, information has value. I put one Ling at each potential third base location. You can see it on the mini-map. And I also have one at the move-out lane. So, I know there's a double medivac somewhere on the map. I have queens. What, eight queens and 33 Lings? Usually 30 links is around the magic number, but it's past 5 minutes 10, which is usually when the 2 one arrives. So sometimes they'll have a quick third medivac follow-up, and I feel very confidently ahead. 58, 59 workers at this stage of the game. It's important to not over-drone and have no defense. I think this is pretty, pretty good. 45 links, a bane or two, and then as you make more and more drones, you can make more and more banes to offset that. I use hold position quite a bit here, just for this little defense. I don't need to go down this ramp really. I mean, I could if I have a good opportunity to just beat the army, but you can think about objectives. What is the objective that I would gain by pushing down this ramp? I would be able to creep here, but my primary advantage right now is my 65 drone economy, which the opponent is not threatening right now. If they were to come up here, it's a more wide open area and my army would do better. This area is kind of bad, but I know that I'm super ahead, so I'm just going to be patient. Hold position. My queens and my Ling Bane are on separate hotkeys, just because their jobs are very different. Queens are very slow and sturdy. Ling Bane is very fast and not sturdy. So I felt like I could beat it with the amount of Ling Bane I had and my 1-1 one, one was done. So just kind of pushed out to be able to secure this area. And then now that I have a really nice economy lead for a while, I can focus on the trickery. So I go for the Spire and then I go for Burrow. Burrow just finished. That means I could Burrow links at these expansions if I was paying attention. I missed that opportunity this game. But now that I've secured this objective, the queens can lay around of tumors. I can push down. On this map, the fourth and fifth are very close to each other. 
So if you have really good money, you might as well just take two bases there. It also makes one of them expendable in the cases where they kill one of them. If they try really hard for it, you just have a different fourth base. So now we focus on the trickery. Some burrowed banes and that sort of thing. It's a little bit important to consider where the Terran's army is. If you just run the banes in front of them when they can see, then usually they're just going to scan and kill them. So you want to think about the Terran's entrances to your base. If we zoom out, we have the zoom out feature. Yeah. So there's this main entrance. This entrance allows them to access this fifth base location. They can walk up to this fourth or walk up to this natural. So these banes are off creep ahead of it, so they're less likely to be scanned. And they're sort of making this a more dangerous movement. I also put two banes here because if they kill these rocks, they have access to my fourth and my third. Another spot to put them would be right here or so. There's one like micro mechanic for establishing these banes in reliable spots. If you just take your army or take the two banes and tell them to go here to the Terran's production and then you just burrow them somewhere along the way. A lot of times, look, Terran rallies their production. They're not parading right now, but in the cases where they do parade, they usually just take the shortest possible rush from their base to one of these objectives, one of these openings from your side of the map. I have 65 lings right now. That's pretty good. Zerglings benefit really well from upgrades. It's a very tiny unit. And they have 2-2, two, two, I think, now? No, 2-2's two, not quite done yet. We'll take my vision so we can see some of these decisions and how the trickery is established. The Bane Mine is scanned. And then there's value in just establishing some paranoia in your opponent's mindset because now they know that bailing mines are a possibility pretty much anywhere so they're going to be using scans to make sure they don't step on mines rather than just dumping all of that energy into mules and you can see in the bank here they have some mineral problems income tab yeah zerg has a really big income lead right now which i feel like would be mostly offset if they didn't scan at all and they just did mules for everything but here, by doing a big ling counter, I create an opportunity to pull my opponent's attention away. So these lings I just sent, I think I sent them here. Can I click the lings and see? Mm, I don't know. I sent them at the turn, around the army. So the path was down here and then over to the side. Let's look at the opponent's vision and see what they're looking at during this ling counter because I smashed their main army. You can see the main army on the mini-map down here. But they're focused very hard on these lings that are running around in their bases. Oh no, there are lings in my third. Oh no, there are lings in my natural. Oh no, there are lings in my third. Oh no, there are lings in my fourth. Oh, better go. Better go get those lings. Scan. Oh, see the lings. All right, let's get these lings. All right, shit, the whole army is dead. So that's kind of the value of the, the trickery, where you give them a bunch of annoying stuff that they have to address, and they're not focusing on the main army. You could do the opposite as well, where you sort of posture like you're about to trade with the army, then you get them to focus on that, and then you focus more on the counterattack. So by attacking with your counterattack group and with your army at the same time, you have two opportunities for the Terran to mess up. The Terran can do the same thing, where they push one location with a big army and they do a drop in another location, or they just do multi-drops. They probably weren't expecting that because it was on their side of the map. And then basically those two big moments were enough to just be in a winning position, from being ahead to just winning the game. And then if you're ever ahead, like a bunch of good stuff has happened for you, the goal would be to max out, usually, with your superior economy, and then trade and remax. Zerg has the big edge of production. We can make units faster than the other races. So make the drones, make the armies, and make the armies again.
Ideally, I think I would have around 70 to 74 drones here. This is a little bit more committed. I'm more committed to my units. They're less expendable. But they're still pretty expendable. The amazing engagement. Pretty much always want to have a flank for this type of fight. It just divides the splash damage of the Widow Mines substantially. And then with Muna's on the production, pushing him with the army, the Terran is dead. So, use some trickery when you do Ling Bay Muna.